Hello and welcome to another episode of rcprinter.com. I'm your host Jordan Visco and today we are going to do some work on our Model T. We're going to reprint some of the pieces we had after our initial test flight accident there. And uh, we've reprinted everything in PLA, regular PLA instead of the P lightweight PLA that we had to start. And also PETG. So all these pieces here are printed in PLA and all these ones, uh, all the wing pieces are printed in PETG. So I thought I'd make just a quick little video here to show you some of the tips and tricks I learned after building it the first time and also to show you some of the quality differences between the lightweight PLA that we originally printed in and the regular materials PLA and PETG that we reprinted in. So we'll compare the print quality as well as the weights so you get a good idea of what uh, you're getting into if you decide to make one of these for yourself. So to start here just to see some of the imperfections that we had on the lightweight PLA I'll show you some close-ups of how the original print looked. So you can see right here there was a bit of an overhang and it didn't print out super nicely there and I think that caused my wing not to attach 100% correctly. You can see on the bottom of the fuselage here you get some lines where there's uh, different pieces connecting. You can see kind of different layer line widths throughout here. Again you can see some of the internal layer supports there. So here you can see along the inside track for this servo wire uh, you can definitely see some imperfections on the outside. There you can see what it looked like on the base of the wing. There's the top of the wing. So it's not too bad, but it's obviously, you know, it's not printing out perfect. There's the top of one of the ailerons. So here we're getting into the PLA pieces, and you can see right here with the overhangs and everything, this part uh, turned out perfectly. Looking around the piece, very, very, very few lines where the internal supports connect. Here's where the wires go for the rear servo controls, and uh, it's looking pretty nice. You can see a small line on this side, but it's barely noticeable. So here's the horizontal tail, and you can see there's no marks or anything on it at all. It's a perfect piece. So we'll take a look at some of the PETG ones. They didn't turn out quite as nice as the PLA ones, but they are still significantly better uh, than the lightweight PLA. We have a few marks up here. This is the wing centerpiece. The ones that turned out the worst were the uh, wing tips here. Um, they're a much bigger surface area. And you can see on this side, I don't know how well that's turning out, there is a bit of warping in between each of the internal supports. So some of them are bowed in and a, a couple of them are bowed out. So I'm not sure if that's going to affect the flight too much, but that's not perfect and we might end up reprinting these wings in a different material. These pieces, however, did turn out quite well much less warping. And I think that's mostly because there's more support on the inside. Tiny little bit of warping on these wing pieces. Maybe a little bit right there. But it's not too bad. Alright, step one, we're going to remove all the brims and then we'll start gluing together. Removing the brim with PLA can be a little harder than lightweight PLA, but what I recommend is that you just bend it over like that and then pull it off. It will likely leave a little ridge around some of the outsides. So what I find works the best is just to take a little bit of sandpaper and just rub it off just like that. And then you don't have to worry about taking off too much material. It's quite easy to do. So in doing the tail the first time in lightweight PLA, one thing that I noticed was I wasn't getting a perfectly straight line across the two rear wings here. And so one thing I'm going to do this time is glue them both into place and then just double check and make sure that everything's perfectly straight before I give it that final spray. So one really important thing to do here is when you attach your tail to your fuselage, make sure that it's aligned perfectly because there is some wiggle room. You want to make sure that you look down the aircraft and align with this little uh, clip right here. You just align everything perfectly before you give it that final spray and lock it into place.
Now we're on to the wing. All right, so we got all the brims off the PETG wing pieces, and I do have to say, getting the brims off PETG is much more difficult than the PLA, but it does come off, it just takes a little bit more effort. In working with these PETG pieces, I can definitely tell they're much more flexible than the PLA ones. Um, and I did find a couple of spots where um, they didn't print out perfectly, so you can see just on the trailing edge of these wings here, uh, there's a little bit under extrusion. I think in the print settings they have a setting for extra prime amount and I think um, changing that would have maybe fixed this a little bit but that's something to watch out for on your prints. That was the worst one but you can see on this one here too I got a little bit on the other side. So one issue I had last time as well this is the center piece of the wing and this is the piece that goes right beside it on the left and there's these little tabs you have to glue in. If you glue them here and then you spray the activator on and then after spraying the activator on, you go to glue the two pieces together. The activator that's already on there mixes with um, this CA glue, and it starts to dry before you can actually put them together. So I ended up having a little bit of a gap in between those, and that's not ideal. So I would recommend using something like this, a really quick setting CA glue that doesn't need an activator, just to glue these little tabs on so that you're not going to end up spraying the activator all over the place. Or if you don't have that, just put those on and then don't use the activator and leave it for five or ten minutes and they should harden up a bit and then you can glue the two pieces together and spray the activator after. So just something to think about as you're building the plane is you don't want to be spraying activator all over pieces that you're going to glue in just a minute because uh, that activator can hang around for a little while and it can make your glue set up before you want it to. Alright, I thought it would be fun here just for a quick sec just to compare the weights of the wing so we get an idea of how much heavier the PETG is and the lightweight PLA. So I stripped the old wing of as many decals as I could get off of it. There's still a couple little pieces of paper on it, but it's going to be pretty much the stock weight of a lightweight PLA wing. So this wing is 117 grams and the PETG wing is 233 grams, so it's almost twice as heavy. So that's actually a pretty crazy weight difference and I might end up actually just reprinting a wing again in this lightweight PLA if I'm having trouble getting it up off the ground. One thing to note about these steering rod connectors is that it is definitely advisable to put them on before you put the hinges. Uh, otherwise, it's very hard to attach those tiny little, I think they're M2 or M2.5 uh, nuts underneath. So definitely do that in advance. This one's not so bad, but this one was a real pain. Another thing to note is you can see here on my PLA pieces, the joints are looking pretty clean. Whereas here on the PETG wing, there's a yellow residue that seems to be showing up and it looks like it's due to the CA activator. Um, and it's around all of the joints and it's pretty wide, which makes me think it's uh, the activator causing that, but it's just kind of an oddity. If the motor that you've chosen for your Model T doesn't quite stick out far enough out of the nose, you can print one of these little shims here that allows the motor to extend just a bit. And there you go with the little shim in it, it's extending just about perfectly. It's a good idea to put some velcro down the inside so you can attach things like your ESC, your battery, and your receiver. But I find mine didn't stick that great the first time, so a little bit of CA glue will help that stay down permanently. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how this is turning out, but I'm just about to go and install the ailerons here. And you can see these actually have the worst warping of everything. And I think it's because there's no structural support inside them, so it just gives a uh, much greater opportunity for warping there, but you can see here it's quite warped and uh, all four pieces of the ailerons are like this. So I'm not sure how much that's going to affect the flight. I think it'll still fly. Um, I just know it's definitely not ideal. So I guess we'll just get them installed and see how it goes. Alright, so we got it all back together here. No decals yet. Um, definitely going to take it up and get it to fly once before spending a ton of time on decals again. But we got uh, all the controls working here. So we got motor spinning the right way. We got our rudder moving. We got our elevator here. And our ailerons. So everything's good to go. I would say first impressions here, it definitely feels a lot more sturdy than it did last time. I can tell if I just give it like a little bump, it's not going to just disintegrate like it did with the lightweight PLA. It's for sure heavier, so we're going to give it a quick weigh here in a sec and just compare the two. And hopefully we can get it off the ground. So I did bust both the props that originally came with the kit that I purchased, so I've gone ahead and ordered some new ones off Amazon. Originally this kit came with a 9 by 45 pitch. Uh, propeller, but the Eclipse and website said the best for this model would be an 
eight by six pitch propeller, so uh, that's what I've installed here. But otherwise, I'm just gonna finish putting her together, check the servo throws, make sure we're getting the right amount of movement uh, on all our servos, and we'll go ahead and bring it out to an airfield and see if we can get her in the sky. Okay, so we'll get a final ready to fly weight here. Previously with the lightweight PLA, our ready to fly weight was about 600 grams, and now we're at 700 and 790. So it's definitely a, a bit heavier, but it's not insane. I was expecting more than that actually. The electronics and uh, metal bits are what make up a large portion of that, so that's why we're not seeing such a drastic increase here. So yeah, it's about a third heavier, or 31.6%. Uh, Let's also quickly check the center of gravity here. So there's some little marks under the wings. These little crosses right here, so if you can feel underneath for those, that's where the plane should balance. So we're obviously quite tail heavy right now. See if we can rearrange some of the electronics inside and get it, uh, get it balanced properly. All right, so instead of a 2S LiPo battery, I have now installed a 3S LiPo. And uh, you can see it's balancing much better. You got this! Uh. <laughs> there you go! Uh. Yes! <laughs> Parts of it. <laughs> it's actually close to the road. Pretty good. The props totally gone. All right, so here's the damage. Uh, you can see the fuselage didn't actually do too bad. The only damage is right up front on the nose. So I got a new one of those uh, we're reprinting right now. And then the wing itself split in half. There's damage on both ends of the wing as well. So you can see there and a little bit of damage on the end of this wing here. So I think I'm going to end up just reprinting the whole wing and uh, one piece of the fuselage and we're good to go. So in reprinting, I'm actually going to reprint everything here in PLA. I just didn't really like how the PETG uh, warped the wings, so I'm just going to reprint that all in PLA. One of the things I really like about printing in PLA versus printing in lightweight PLA is I can print multiple sections together. So I set these two printers up here with uh, pretty much the entire wing of the Eclipse and Model T, and they'll be ready to go tomorrow morning. And then down here, I got one of my Ender 3s, and we got that front part of the fuselage done. So between you know, these guys and that one, we should have everything we need to go tomorrow morning. All right, so another thing I went out and did today was to buy a trainer plane. Obviously, my Eclipse and Model T build is uh, capable of flying. I'm just, unfortunately, I'm capable of properly flying it. Uh, so I need to learn. So I bought one of these trainer guys. So we'll get out there with that again tomorrow and then learn how to properly fly the plane. And then once we get comfortable, we can switch over to our 3D printed guy. All right, so it's the next morning and there's our new 3D printed wing. Back in business. So easy to fly. Wow.
turned into a mountain. Yeah. Up. flying when it's just so easy like this. positive, right? Oh no. Well, it was good while it lasted, eh? Yeah. So there you go, it's actually not too bad. You can see all we're gonna have to do is cut this right here, uh, cut the fuselage at this part, and then glue on three or four new pieces. But otherwise, landing gear is still in good condition, the wing's in good condition, the tail's uh, still perfect, so not too bad. So here we've got most of the new pieces we need. We only actually ended up needing two new pieces of fuselage, uh, the cockpit cover there, and we'll need a couple of little mechanical pieces like the motor holder and such, but it will fly another day. And here's what the plane itself ended up looking like. You can see you're gonna need a new motor holder, a couple of these little side pieces, and uh, the landing gear holders for the inside. But other than that, it's not too bad. Wing is still in perfect condition. And with just about an hour of work, we'll have it ready to go for its next flight. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of RC Printer. If you did, please consider giving us a like or subscribe. It really helps me out. And as always, if you're looking for cool ideas of 3D printed projects to build, kits, parts, or instructions on how to build them, check us out. We're actually launching power packs for these Eclipse and Planes on our website at www.rcprinter.com. And they come with uh, motors, speed controllers, propellers, servos, most everything you're going to need to power up your plane. So check that out, and we'll see you next time.